Back in 05 was a hurricane Katrina. Picked a fire chopper wreck, I stick into a FEMA. We got FEMA boys. FEMA boys? FEMA boys. FEMA boys. FEMA boys. FEMA boys. Okay, dude, 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 you're here, alright? We are in full damage control mode, effective immediately. <laughs> Calm down, dude. What's going on? It's not good. Sam's girlfriend, she died. Aww. So, do you mean died or died, died? <laughs> well, sh okay, she didn't actually die, all right? She just uh, cut him off financially. <laughs> dude, Sam's not taking it well, though, right? He's in, dude, he's in one of the sad boy moods. Sad boy Sam. <laughs> Textbook sad boy Sam. We need to help him. Let's go, dude. This episode of FEMA Boys is recorded in front of a live studio audience. <laughs> Gotta be him. I think so. Sounds like he's skinning a cat. <laughs> oh god, what's that smell? Something smells like a carcass. Dude, this is much worse than I thought, Sam. Come on. Sam, is this what you've been up to? We need to make content. Come on, Sam. You gotta clean yourself up, bud. Are those frozen fish fingers? <laughs> I love you, I'm you eat a frozen fish finger? Did you shit the sheets, Sam? Did you shit your sheets, Sam? No. Lift the blankets right now, Sam. What's in your hand, man? Did you shit in your hands? Is there shit in your hands, Sam? What the? What the? <laughs> Susan said she's gonna buy me those turtle skin boots that I just, just needed. <laughs> Alright, let's talk about this. Alright. Alright, look. What do you say we just go work on some content? You know, re-spark what we had. Aww. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Okay, champ. Run along and go find some cringy videos, alright? <laughs> Hey campers, so we are pretty sure that you are all aware what a sugar daddy and a sugar baby is. Um, it has been a strange phenomenon that has blossomed amongst the millennial generation in particular. Um, but we've noticed that it has also been a weird trend on YouTube. Okay, so these videos are usually titled something like My Sugar Daddy Experience. And uh, they're usually like storytelling videos. They sit down in front of a camera and like just talk about their experience. When you boil it down, all these YouTubers share four main characteristics. So the first characteristic is superficiality. And then they were just like, I like to go shopping and I want somebody to pay for that. Or like, I like massages and I want somebody to pay for that. The second personality trait is entitlement. So I heard you tip girls uh, 50 to $100. First of all, bitch, no, he doesn't tip girls 50 to $100. He tips me 100 to $200. The rest of you peasants get like 50, 10 fucking freaking whatever dollars here and there. Not me. Number three, justification. But literally, the only plan was to show up, 
go to the thing and probably never contact him again. That's so mean. I'm so, I'm a bad person. I really, like literally I was doing this entire thing for educational purposes. And lastly, the fourth trait that most of these sugar babies share is hypocrisy. This is really not me. I don't do stuff like that. Like, I'm just so curious. Like, it's really gonna fuck me up one day, but like, it hasn't happened yet. We good. Okay, so the YouTuber Hey It's Brie, she made a video called Scamming Sugar Daddies for Money. Story and, time. Yeah, it's a story time vlog, and I think this video in particular um, really reflects all the made for characteristics that these YouTubers share. Mm -hmm. Today I'm going to tell you guys about how I catfished and the years that I catfished um, for money. In 2015, like, I don't really know what I was going through with my aunt. Like, we were definitely having a power struggle during that time. She was still paying my phone bill. She was doing, like, a lot of stuff and she wanted me to start helping and I didn't understand why she wanted my help because she was like grown and had a job for like years and I was like just starting my life and I didn't understand why she wanted me to take my money and pay bills with it like I should be taking my money and like looking good and getting designer. Okay so the fact that that she felt that she didn't have to like pay her own way like after her aunt asked her to just pay her phone bill the fact that she wouldn't really speaks to how entitled she is. During that time in my life, I just wanted to clout chase. Like, I just wanted to party. I just wanted to be a socialite. She acts very entitled here because um, she talks about how her aunts, uh, like, she, like her aunt should pay for because she's always worked a job. Mm -hmm. Like, she's like, well, she's a job for years and she's done it for years. So she, it's like, why can't she do it? I don't understand why I gotta do it. I'm like, they're your bills. Yeah. Like, you're a full grown adult, all right? And you're sitting here acting like, oh, like, I don't like, I don't like working. I just, I just want to be a socialite. But yeah, that's what every person wants. And it's really, really uh, unfair that for you to say that you shouldn't have to do that because she's been working for X amount of years and why can't she just do it, keep doing what she's doing? It kind of made sense how, like, when I started beefing with my aunt about, like, paying for things like toilet paper or, like, dropping on the Wi-Fi bill, when we started to argue about stuff like that, you know, a person with common sense will go get a job, but I didn't feel like going to get a job. Like, I didn't, I still to this day don't like working. She completely contradicts herself here because she's saying that a person with common sense, which she already established that she thought she was, she said that a person with common sense would get a job, but she didn't get a job, so she doesn't have common sense. Yeah, she openly admits she has no common sense. Yeah. And she just doesn't feel like it. FEMA boys will return after a word from our sponsors. Everyone knows John from the giant tortoise, the oldest living animal on earth. Well now he's a hot new toy just in time for Christmas. Introducing Turtle Action Jonathan. <laughs> Yo, is that Jonathan? The oldest, the oldest living animal on earth? You betcha! This is my Turbo Action Jonathan! Radical! <laughs> Turbo Action Jonathan does everything. You can walk with him, sleep with him, watch out. You better keep them away from your daddy's cigarettes. Jonathan! <laughs> Turbo Action Jonathan can be anyone's best friend. Oh, Jonathan, you're my favorite toy. What's up, ass cheek? Fuck, not Troy. He's way too developed for a 12-year-old. What kind of lame toy is this? That's Jonathan, the Action Turtle. No, not Jonathan! Don't ruin your parents' marriage like Troy. Hey! Get yourself a Turbo Action Jonathan for only eight easy payments of $9.99. Shipping and handling not included. Turbo Action Jonathan, a choking hazard for your kids. FEMA Toys and its subsidiaries are not responsible for any harm caused by the product. And now, back to your regularly scheduled programming. And remember kids, if you don't feel like doing something, you don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to. Now, I'm debating if I want to do story times about being a sugar baby because I don't want to promote that lifestyle. But I will say that my experience on Seeking Arrangement as myself versus when I was catfishing, it got to do with this. All right, so right here, she, she says she doesn't condone the lifestyle of what she's literally about to go do, but she phrases it like she's going to catfish, so it's somehow better, but it's really the same thing. But yeah, the fact that she would uh, not condone a lifestyle, and the next sentence explain how she did it. No, the same sentence. It's yeah, remarkable. Yeah, yeah. it's remarkable. It's like, I don't condone it, comma, 
But I didn't. But also, here's how you do it perfectly. And she was like, oh yeah, just get on ticket arrangement. You'll get the you'll get the money for the ticket. And I thought she was lying. And so I didn't sign up. I'm like, nobody's gonna give me three hundred dollars like to go to a festival. And she ended up going. She got on secret arrangement, she got her money, and she went. And that's kind of what made me want to dip my toe into the sugar world. All right, so Brie justifies it by seeing her friend get $300 for a concert ticket. And then she even takes it a step further. And she takes this girl who has nothing to do with it and exploits her images for personal gain. Now, y'all got to remember, this was 2015. This was 2015. This was like... Before all these girls started doing Twitter threads on how to catfish, like, before it started to get oversaturated, it was such a good way to make money. Like, it was so bomb. So bomb. I, I did it before, I did 20, this 2015 before I had all these Twitter threads about, about catfishing. Like, these lame it, bitches. All these, these catfishing yeah. made made simple videos. It's like they just came onto it now, bitch. Yeah. I was catfishing yeah. back in 2015. 2015. Yeah, I don't condone it, but like, I invented it. Also, I'm better than you at it because I'm the best at it. And I bet I don't condone it, but I'm also good at it. You should do it too. So I found the perfect girl, okay? She was a model. She also posted like thirst traps and she posted like regular pictures, like just regular pictures of like her going on a hike. So she had like the perfect balance I needed to catfish. So it was easy to build a personality around this girl and that's why I made so much money catfishing because I built like an entire human being. That's because I'm sick. So she used these fake images of this girl who has nothing to do with this by saying she's a, what is it, a thirst trap. Yeah. And it was easy to use because she had pictures of her body and her face cut out. Yeah. So um, she uses this like it, this like random Instagram models pictures to exploit uh, these old men on this seeking arrangements website uh, to get even more money yeah. and further pioneer yeah. uh, the uh, catfish game. With him, I kind of had to step my photo gathering up and like go on Tumblr and get nudes and find girls whose body types kind of matched. It really didn't bother me. And it didn't really seem weird to me, like, the time that I was spent on Tumblr looking at random girls naked. Okay, so not only, not only, to, so to add to this, to the justification, so when she got into it more, so the fact that, oh, it worked with these other guys, the, so sh she thought it was okay to go even steal even more people's identities yeah. and new photos and take them and get, give them to other people for their money. So the fact that her friend got... $300 per concert ticket, she, it jumped all the way to, I'm gonna steal people's news on the internet and sell them to old men. This whole kind of video shows that she's superficial because she's taking all these people's service level beauty and their, their looks and their nakedness and she's using them to get concert tickets and, and money. And that just basically is the definition of superficial. Guys, I don't think you're ready. I'm talking the ultimate YouTube sugar baby, Sutherland. Claw, Sutherland. We dug deep. We crawled. Deeper than ever imaginable. We schmoozed. We slithered. We boozed. Until we came across okay. this, um... <laughs> the individual. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to say it. This individual. I think it's better if you guys just, yeah. just see for yourself. How the fuck was I supposed to know that fuck it was borderline third world? I'm not travelling halfway across the world to land in some fucking povo shack. Fuck me dead. Don't get me started. I've been on travelguide.com. We're expecting a real tearjerker video. Um, so her video is called mm -hmm. Tour of My Deceased Sugar Daddy's Apartment, right? And uh, it opens up with her ranting on the phone. Um, and then suddenly a pink bar appears and with the text reading, my ball sack was exposed. So we, you already know it's gonna be a sad video. So, so you know, uh, you know there's no cutting of bad footage. Yeah, so me, if I'm making a video I, and my ball sack was exposed, <laughs> instead of just covering it with a pink bar. And still mentioning it. I'm yeah, yeah, mentioning. she admitted it. Like, what do you, like, do a second take. Yeah. Come on. Books a one way flight to Barcelona, to Spain, totally fucks up on the children. The children, mind you, 8 to 11 years old, were living by themselves in an apartment here in Sydney for two weeks. Totally alone. It wasn't until the school found out. So you, you're kind of riding this wave of emotion in the first part of the video where she's explaining that her sugar daddy isn't dead and she kind of, I don't, I don't know what she's talking about, frankly. She's kind of talking. So this is where the titular tour of the deceased sugar daddy's apartment finally comes into play. And folks, um, 
th I think this is where Clara Sutherland really becomes a, the star that we all know she is. Moment. Gorge mirror, but I can't take any photos in it because everything in the background just looks so junky. Unless I caught like this little section. That's gorge. But still, I'm not a fan of the artwork on the walls. I'm not a fan of the air conditioning and the telecommunication system. It's just. She goes into saying, I hate everything in this apartment. It all sucks. The, the painting on the walls sucks. The, the, te the telecommunication system, fucking, it's a, it's a phone connected to a wall. He destroyed his entire family, his, his kids' lives, and his, like, love life, so that I can have his apartment. But he's a bad guy, and he deserve more. And by the way, fuck this apartment. Yeah. There's the bed, but I'm not gonna get into it because I did shit the sheets just recently. <laughs> She's like, oh, I get, it's, it's a little musty in here, I shit the sheets. And over here is a, is a window. I accidentally ate a frozen fish finger. Collected food poisoning and shit the sheet. I just think it's so gross. Like the word fish finger. Yeah. It's yes. just, no. Yeah. Well, like, no, she's so like, we can only no, she's just, talking about a, a fish stick. Yeah, just I'm trying to it. justify it. You're just trying to be like, it's like, oh, you know, it's fine. I ate a frozen fish finger. It's fine. <laughs> Makes it okay. Because, you know, if I didn't eat the frozen fish it finger. I wanted the tartar sauce. I would have been a grown yeah. adult and not and gone to the toilet. And to me, it's clearly not the frozen fish finger that they should think. You just I've had several fish sticks in my life that I've never shared the sheets. But you knew of them as fish sticks. So if you know of them as fish fingers, it might be a difference. The whole shit the sheets part, to me, is clearly the justification aspect. Because she yeah. justifies the fact that she, she, she shit the sheets by just saying she ate a fish finger. Yeah, and passing it off like, oh, that's fucking commonplace. Here's the Wi-Fi signal. I've got it on for now, just because I need to download an episode of Big Brother, but I do turn that off when I'm not using it, which is all the time, because I just think the Wi-Fi signal, it emits far too much radiation, and I don't want cancer in the brain. Okay, so this part in particular, um, really <laughs> impresses me, um, or actually it baffles me. Um, she doesn't use... Wi-Fi because it emits radiation apparently. Yeah, which is news to me. Breaking news. Speaking of cancer in the brain, I'm also going to be getting rid of this faux plant. And I just think plastic plants, they emit radiation. Monstrosity of fumes and whatever goes into making plastic plants. It mustn't be good for you, so I'm getting rid of that. Apparently, I know those phyguses emit radiation. <laughs> yeah. Plastic plants. All right, anyone out there has a phycus eye, in their house, you're gonna die a horrible death of cancer. Get it out of there. Get, Run. Get, no, burn fuck Wi-Fi. No, fuck 20th century or 21st century innovations. Fuck and 20th century. century. Dude, like, All the centuries innovations. We should probably go get a cancer screen. Honestly, oh, dude. dude. I'm worried. I kind of need a mammogram. Um, this is my new baby. I mean, she is literally just like a bottom of the range MacBook, but I'm so obsessed with her. And the case is just gorge. Hold up. Let me just throw that away. Wait, let me shine the light on her. <gasps> oh my gosh. New York Fashion Week, get your heart out. Isn't that just one of a kind? If she wasn't entitled enough saying that, that first of all, she, she said her, her sugar daddy's dead because he cut her off financially. Everything in her apartment sucks, even though she didn't buy any of it. Yeah. It was all given to her. She just throws, just yeets her laptop. <laughs> A MacBook just throws it, dude. It's like, <laughs> boom, boom. Like, it breaks, definitely. And she's like, oh, I hope it didn't break, but look at this, look at this nice computer case. Yeah, what's funny is, oh, she, she only did it to show her computer case. FEMA Boys will return after a word from our sponsors. Does your life ever feel too easy? Yeah! Are you just waiting for that rude awakening? Yeah! Well, we here at FEMA Inc. have a perfect product for you. Introducing Motion Censored Kabucha Mask. Just because it's in your size doesn't mean you should wear it. Yeah! Motion Sensor Kabucha Mask will reveal to you the disappointing reality that is your existence. You don't shower nearly as much as you should. This revolutionary new product dishes out piping hot pieces of humble pie upon the slightest of motion. Oh shit, fuck, fuck you pussy. <laughs> Guaranteed to remind you just how far from perfect you really are. You'd still have friends if your personality wasn't so off putting.
and on days where you're feeling it just a little too much. He might not be in the same place you left him. You didn't try in school, because you feared that if you did, you'd still be in the same place. No matter what you do, Motion Center Kabucha Mask knows just how to get under your skin. You just like my dad, man. What the fuck? Don't get left in the dust. Everyone is getting their Motion Center Kabucha Mask. Order now for only $39.95. Shipping and handling not included. And now. Back to your regularly scheduled programming. Okay, so the next video, um, all about a very dramatic title. Spoiler alert, it is clickbait. Okay, so her video is titled, I Was Kidnapped. This story is going to be about my childhood and how the thought life chose me. I'm also wearing my hair like this for the whole video because I only have one hoop. I lost the other one while busting a nut in a cubicle. She has pictures of herself on her bedroom wall. Framed? Framed! Framed photos of herself. That is the it's most. Selfies, two selfies. Yeah. Oh. She's pictures she alone took of herself. Yep. She's had to frame them. On it's the, the same day too. It's like yeah, the, it's the same, same outfit. It's she, the has, same hey, she also has one friend in that picture in the middle. So you yeah. can't. You gotta give a teeny, okay. a teeny tad bit of credit. Shut up. <laughs> it's that's literally the most vain like self-absorbed thing I've ever seen yeah. in my entire life. I was having heart pumpulations thinking about my childhood and how this makeup got to be in this drawer and exactly why I have not touched it since. <laughs> so grotty. The whole kind of story starts when she goes into her bathroom and she opens up a drawer that she hasn't opened up in like two or three years and she finds a whole bunch of shitty makeup that she hasn't touched. And, and it, it just kinda, spawned a bunch of Yeah, memories. it kind of unravels a... A dark, a, a, a dark paper, path. if you, if you will. Um, it brings back a story from when she was 16, when she was kidnapped. We gotta go back to when I was maybe 16 years old, and Grinder was my life. I know Grinder is like associated with casual sex, but sex was not on the table. This guy on Grinder messaged me, and he was like, "I got some makeup." He was like 45 years old, married, had a couple of kids. The typical storyline you find on Grinder. That sort of stuff turns me on. So she was on Grinder and some guy messaged her and said, hey, you do want a lot of makeup. And she was trying to tell herself that this wasn't going to be a, a weird, maybe sexual thing, but she just admits to knowing it. And, you know, it just goes down a dark road. So I arranged to meet up with him, but I'm real rude about it. If you want to give me the makeup, you're driving out to where I live. FYI, I live in the middle of butt fuck nowhere, so good luck driving your Mercedes all the way out here. It's gonna get dusty, it's gonna get rocks smashed up against the doors. I don't drive a car, I don't know the parts of a car. It's also weird how much she brings up the gravel hitting the car. Like, yeah, like cars can drive on gravel. Yeah, if they're made, no, they're not necessarily made for gravel, but it's not gonna like ruin your car. Mercedes pulls up in his Mercedes Benz on the dirt road. Rocks and shit flying everywhere. The car's all scratched up. I slide right into his car I, like, without a second thought. Didn't look at the number plates, didn't assess fucking shit. I was like, that's a Mercedes Benz, get me in. So she's gonna hop into this like weird this guy, okay, he made it, so he's willing to drive his fucking Mercedes on his gravel road out to, to buttfuck nowhere. Buttfuck. Nowhere. And you're just like, oh, I'm hopping this guy's car. Like, he's way too willing. Well, just to give you makeup, too. To he's give you way makeup. way too willing. Yeah. To give you makeup. Yeah. You're gonna get body snatched. Drive, 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 get out of here. We're just like rushing out of the fucking swamp zone. And Mercedes flops his cock out. This old married man flops his cock out. In these story times on YouTube, the girls are always like, I couldn't look, I just looked away, I tried to get out of the car. Let me tell you, I did not stop looking at it. It was so weird. I had never seen something so old. All jokes aside, uh, I'm not justifying his actions or a lot of Oh yeah, no, he's a fuck too. Oh, but yeah. like, come like, there's bad people out there, guys. There's people that who want to hurt you. you and hurt you. Yeah. Who literally just want to like, do only bad things to you, right? Yeah. So do not, like, just... It's, make sure you're safe. Yeah, do not get in a random car with a stranger who gives you makeup and then not expect anything bad to happen. Like, the world's a rough place. So yeah, this happened at 16. She was stuck in a car with an older man 
who whipped his dick out and told her to touch it, and she was scared. And in the, and her description to her video is funny. It says, "Don't hop into the car of the stranger unless there's a good story time to come out of it." Smack it on the door. Opening the door. That was my let me out moment. He pulled over. I got out with all the makeup. I was not about to leave that behind. I've come all this way. I've had to look at the turtle head. I slammed the Mercedes Benz door and I'm just standing on the side of this dirt right in the middle of butt fuck nowhere. So she, it sounded like she had a little bit of sense. She yeah. got out of the car, screamed at him and then did, uh, did, did like, Decides to hook oh, it home. Well, she yeah, mentions her, really denied to get back in the car. She mentions her get out moment. Like, that's a thing. I yeah. didn't know that was a phraseology. Nowadays, if I found myself in that situation, I would hop right back in the fucking car and be like, yeah, drive me home, babe. <laughs> no way am I walking. That was like a one hour strut. Dude, she's just a hypocrite, like through and through. She's like, oh yeah, I, I, this is my, my get out moment. This is my, this is my come to Jesus moment. I realize that my ways are flawed. And then she's like, now, if I, if I, if that happened to me again, some guy whipped his dick out, I, I hopped out, and he's like, you want to ride back? I'd hop right back in. I'd ride back, like, I'm not walking home with two bags of makeup. What? She's like, I Someone could see I would jump through the sunroof. <laughs> <laughs> I would have rode in the trunk. I think the moral of the story is, have fun while you're young, but always have your wits about you. Don't get yourself into shitty situations. I am scared to get into an Uber these days. Scared too. I carry a knife on me at all times. I've been to martial arts things. If you've got like anger issues or like real anxiety issues, hop in a car with a pedophile and just let loose of your inhibitions. What she says at the beginning, I agree with. That like, it's yeah, you gotta, even if it's like uncomfortable and like something you, something's doing something you don't like, you gotta speak up. You gotta like tell them to stop because you're like, you don't want them to touch you, right? But then she goes on to say that you sh if you have anxiety problems or depression, you should no, hop in a car. Anger issues. Anger issues, yeah. It's anxiety or anger issues. You hop in a car with a pedophile. And let loose of your inhibitions. Yeah. Okay, so, and uh, this is like the most hypocritical moment out of all these, in my opinion, because she goes on a rant for about a minute about how you should have your wits about you and be careful. And she does Muay Thai. And has yeah, a yeah, 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 yeah. And how she has takes, taken steps to protect herself by by doing uh, martial arts and carrying weapons. Um, but then she goes on right ahead and convinces- uh, Impressionable? Yeah, yeah, impressionable young- uh, People with problems, yeah, children. Yeah, teenage, yeah. Uh, uh, teenagers with um, mental illnesses. Um, yeah, emotional problems. Yeah, to then go in cars with pedophiles. Like specifically, not even like strangers. Yeah, yeah. Specifically pedophiles. Like yeah. her point, her main point was like, you know, if you're uncomfortable, try to get over the uncomfortable things in life. But. Her exact example was getting a pedophile's car. All right, so uh, I think for the last piece of evidence, I mean, Brody's been fuming over there. Uh, I think he's got a hot take to do. So uh, we'll cut over to the Brody camp. <laughs> oh, oh, Brody. Oh, Brody. What a All jokester. Right. Uh, he does it again. Um, I mean, I take so hot. Yeah, so... I mean, true to today's times, you know what yeah. I mean? It's so rich. rich. Yeah, really telling, riveting. All right, guys, it has been a true Feeling Boys episode. Remember, um... A crispy one. Yeah, dude, yeah. super crispy. And, um, uh, yeah. And, uh, uh, for all you uh, return viewers, Brady's uh, test results are negative. All right, stay crispy. Hey, we're the FEMA boys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and sound off in the comments below. And make sure you hit that notification bell. And stay tuned for more FEMA boys content.